Good morning, guys. I pray you all are doing well. This morning, I have some insight I want to share with you guys. And I've been praying for the Holy Spirit to give me the right words because there's an encouragement that I've found in this insight that God has given me, but I don't know how to express. I'm trying to give you guys the words that are in my head. Um, so I'm just going to pray before we start this. And I, and I believe that the Holy Spirit is going to give me the right word so you guys can receive the same encouragement that I received this morning. So, Father, I just thank you in this moment for this encouragement. I thank you, Father, how you're always speaking to your children, how you provide us with the reassurance that we need as we go through these moments of unknown, Lord God. And I just ask that you give me the right words to speak, to encourage your children during this hour, Lord God. That it be your words that are spoken, that the Holy Spirit give them understanding as they receive, Lord God. Open our hearts and open our ears, Lord God, in this hour, that we may hear you. And let any revelation and insight that you wish to give be given in this moment, Lord. We release ourselves to you completely in full surrender. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, guys. So this morning I was doing my devotional, and my devotional was really highlighting um, how God can do the impossible, how we shouldn't be focusing on the past because God is doing a new thing. And so how God will move in this hour, it's not going to be like what we're used to. Um, and so it gave different scriptures to look into, right? And one of the scriptures was Psalm 68. So when I was reading Psalm 68, the verses that highlighted, like that spoke to me were Psalm 68, verses 8 through 10 and this is what it says the earth quaked and the heavens poured down rain before God the one of Sinai before God the God of Israel rain in abundance O God you shed abroad you restored your inheritance as it languished your flock found a dwelling in it in your goodness O God you provided for the needy now the reason why these verses stuck out to me is like I had highlighted in the community page, one of the words that I have been seeing very frequently in different places and readings and sermons that just keep popping up everywhere is the word abundance. Like in, I'm telling you, I've seen this word. I've had people send me scriptures at random and it's, it's like the word abundance has been everywhere. But one of the other words that I have started noticing this week also coming up in different areas is the word inheritance. Okay. And so the fact that verse nine had both abundance and inheritance in it really spoke to my spirit. So rain in abundance, O God, you shed abroad. You restored your inheritance as it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided for the needy. So we know that in the Bible, rain represents blessings, right? So rain in abundance, Oh God, you shed abroad. So blessings in abundance you shed. Your, you restored your inheritance as it language. So an inheritance is something that people gain because of their fathers, right? It's a it's a it's gaining like a possession of prosperity because of who their parents are, their fathers, right? And so as I read this verse, what I was understanding from it is that the blessings that have been like bestowed to us because of our inheritance as children of God through Jesus Christ, right? This in this abundant blessings, this inheritance, God's going to shed as it language, right? As it seemed like it was impossible as we grew weary waiting, right? It's it's at that moment where it seems like it's not going to happen, where we least expect it, where it seems like all hope is gone. That's when God will pour out his blessings and, and we will see the inheritance as his children, right? And how verse 10, it goes on, your flock found a dwelling in it. This is where we will find rest, right? In your goodness, oh God, you provided for the needy. And that's how a lot of us feel right now. We feel like we we need something. Like we've been yearning, we've been waiting, we've been praying, we've been fasting, we've been seeking, right? And we're just like, God, when will it come? When will it be our time? When will we, when will we finally enter our promised land, right? And that is what God was 
saying, well, that's what my devotional was highlighting that God is doing a new thing. And so when you, when you least expect it in ways you don't expect, that's when God will come through. Right? So when I was reading the commentary on these verses in my Bible, it highlighted I'm just going to read it to you guys. It says, these verses recall the way God led his people through the wilderness from Sinai into his inheritance, which was Canaan, the promised land, where God's flock, which is God's people, found a dwelling. Not only did God give Israel a place to live, but he made it fruitful. This is why they highlights rain in abundance. And then it says, verse eight echoes what judges in chapter five, verse four and five says, which also describes God's progress to the land. Okay. So I went to judges chapter five, verses four through five. And to my surprise, I had highlighted the commentary for these exact verses when I don't know, but I had it highlighted and I had written scripture next to it. So I'm going to read you guys the verses and then I'll read you the commentary. So it says in Judges chapter five, verses four through five, Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the region of Eden, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped. Yes, the clouds dropped water. The mountains quaked before the Lord, even Sinai before the Lord, the God of Israel. So in the commentary, it says the Lord's marching from Seir and Edom likely refers to God's trans transferring his abode. So his resting place from the wilderness to Canaan. So from the wilderness to the promised land. And it says from one mountain to another. So from one mountain, Sinai, to the other mountain, which is Zion. Okay. In Zion in Hebrew means God's dwelling place. Okay. It's known as the place of holiness. Now in back then, I don't know when I had written Deuteronomy chapter one, verse two, next to this Bible commentary. So I went to the verse um, in my Bible. And it says it is an 11 days journey from Horeb by, by way of Mount Seir to Gadesh Barnea. Now God had given me a revelation on this verse two years ago. Okay. And this was on June 16, 2022. So when I broke down this scripture, Horeb represents the wilderness. Okay, so Horeb is where Mount Sinai is. This is the place where God gave Moses the commandments in the wilderness. And this was the beginning of the journey of the Israelites out of the wilderness by God's hand, by God guiding them to Paran, which was a place within the promised land, Kadesh Barnea. Okay, and so Mount Seir that this verse highlights, because it says that it was the 11th day journey from Horeb. So from the beginning of where they were in the wilderness, to enter into the promised land, they went by way of Mount Seir. Mount Seir was the land that God gave Esau after he sold his birthright to Jacob. And in this land, in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 5, God tells the Israelites, Do not contend with them, for I will not give you any of their land. No, not so much as for the sole of the foot to tread on, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. So basically, to go by way of Mount Seir is to go through a place where you cannot defend yourself. You cannot fight for it yourself because the Israelites couldn't fight for themselves or defend themselves there. So this, this is a place where they have to rely solely on the Lord to see them through it. Okay. And so this 11 day journey that it highlights in Deuteronomy chapter one, verse two, to go from the wilderness to the promised land, it has to be through a way where we are fully surrendered, relying on God to carry us through. Because that's what Mount Seir represented to the Israelites, a place where they could not defend themselves, where they had to trust in the Lord to protect them against their enemies. Okay, Because Esau's people in Mount Seir were the Edomites. They were against the Israelites. And so this is a place where you're in front of your enemies, but you're trusting in the Lord to see you and carry you through, okay, into your promise and through this place. And so as I read this verse and I thought back to Psalm 68 about God giving abundance and inheritance as it languished, as it seemed 
as people were getting weary, as it seemed impossible, I understood that God was highlighting, this is how he's going to do it. This is how he's going to carry us out of the wilderness into our promised lands. It's going to be by, by way of Mount, our Mount Seir, by way of being in front of our enemies and realizing that it's not anything that we can do in our hands, but trusting and being fully surrendered to God's leading by way of the Holy Spirit during this time, where we see ourselves go from the wilderness season to transition to the promised land. It's going to re require full obedience to the Holy Spirit in this hour and trusting God's guidance. And so guys, today is March 13th, okay? Today is actually... A significant day four years ago today in the United States is when the lockdowns began from the pandemic. And for many of you guys, this these past four years was your wilderness. This is where God called you out of the places where you were in the world. And he he started to mold you and started to highlight the things in you that needed to be addressed. Right. He started to show you uh, your purpose, like why why he created you for such a time as this. I know it was my time for that. And so this was your wilderness period. And so now many of you like me are seeing that God is preparing you to transition out of the wilderness, right? He's already giving you glimpses. You're seeing his hand in different places as he starts to put the pieces together to bring you to this promised land that he has shown you, right? And so 11 days from today is March 24th. This year... March 24th is the beginning of the Hebrew um, celebration of Purim. Purim is a festival in the Jewish calendar that celebrates how the Jews were delivered from annihilation from Haman. Okay. Um, if you're not familiar of the story, I encourage you to read the book of Esther. It highlights Purim. Okay. And how Purim came to be. But one of the things about the story of Esther is that it highlights how the first became last and the last became first. And I have shared this with you guys before in the past, that when God brings forth this time of judgment and blessings, this is one of the things we will see that the first will become last and the last will become first. Those who have been in high positions, who have been using their power and authority for wrong, for wicked, right? They will be humbled during this time of judgment and at the same time those who have been walking in humility seeking the lord and his will will be exalted to places of high authority and so this is what's going to happen as we journey from the wilderness into our promised lands we're going to see that by through surrender through this mount seer right through our surrender and through seeking the Lord, we're going to see how God elevates his people in times of darkness, okay? And how he humbles those who have been in position and who have been using it for wicked intent, okay? How they're going to be humbled. And this is the same scenario that happens in the book of Esther between Haman and the Israelites, right? And so one thing about the book of Esther that a lot of people know is that is the only book in the Bible that never mentions God specifically. It never mentions God specifically. But when you read through the book, you see how God's hand was upon it, even though he was not mentioned, not once in the book of Esther. And so that is that is how God is going to transition us now from the wilderness to our promised lands. We are going to see God's hand in miraculous ways doing new things right and it's going to seem like it's not going to be this miraculous encounter like god miraculously like told us to do this and this it's just going to be because we were obedient to the holy spirit's leading we see how out of nowhere we walked from the wilderness to the promised land but when we look back we'll see it was god's hand the entire time how he led us through through things that we didn't even know we could be protected from what we could protect ourselves from and so i just pray the holy spirit be giving you guys understanding as i'm speaking because i'm feel i feel like i'm not doing justice in ex and explaining to you guys what this revelation is that god's giving me but basically 
just how it took just how these 11 days journey from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea was way by through the way of Mount Seir. Just how they went from the wilderness to their promised land through a path where they had to face their enemies and could not defend themselves. They had to trust and rely on the Lord and complete surrender, right? That's the same way that God's going to take us out of our wilderness during this time. And just how 11 days from today highlights Purim. In that Purim, it was a reversal from the first becoming the last and the last becoming the first, right? That's exactly what we're going to see when God takes us from our wilderness into our promise. And we're going to see this reversal of how the things that oppressed us, how the things that caused us, you know, humiliation while we were sitting in the wilderness will be the very things that bring us blessing and inheritance during times when we least expected it. So I just pray the Holy Spirit give you guys understanding. I know this did not, I'm not sure if I elaborated this or expressed this correctly, but I pray the Holy Spirit be the one that speaks to you guys during this time and that you get this message that this abundance and this inheritance that is coming is going to be during a time when we are most weary, where we least expect God to come through. We're going to see at that point, he start to pour out his blessings and the things the inheritance basically represents the things that you've been sowing into all these years that that God has been working in you and through you, right? You've been poor, you've been seeking the Lord diligently, doing the work he's called you to do. You've been sowing seeds, you've been praying, you've been fasting. And so you probably have been wondering like when am I going to see the harvest of this, right? But you weren't doing it to gain a harvest. You were doing it because you love God and because you want to honor him, right? But you're want, but you read in the Bible, right, that there's an inheritance, right, when you when you sow, and so you're like, okay, at what point will I see it? And so this is the time. This is the time when you least expect it. When it seems like all hope is lost, this is when you will see the inheritance, and and so that God is just letting us know in this hour how how we're going to see this inheritance, how we are transitioning from the wilderness to the the promised land and the way that we will see it is through a way of complete surrender as as god moves in areas when we're confronting our enemies right how he makes a way for us and it will we will know it was god's hand the whole time even though it might seem like it was just these practical steps that were taken but it when we look back we will see it was the holy spirit's guidance that led us to the promised land because it was in our surrender that the Lord gave us the instruction and direction. And so I just pray that this, this give you insight, guys. And you're able to, I hope this encourages you the way it encourages me. And I pray that God gives you the understanding. Um, and until next time.